And now, the first alert storm team. Live from the 13 Now Digital Desk, this is Tropic Topics. Sponsored by Peden Heating and Air Conditioning and Mariana Toyota. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm News 13 meteorologist Kristen Kennedy here to break down a couple different interests ongoing in the Atlantic, keeping a close eye now that we are, of course, into the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, already having our first name stormed uh, a little bit earlier this year. Now keeping a close eye on three different systems, believe it or not, that are uh, being monitored by the National Hurricane Center and a couple more behind that possible as we continue through the month of July. So let's get started here as we take a live look at our water vapor content across much of the southern half of Florida. The orange there on the map indicates dry air. Meanwhile, the gray and parts of blue indicates really high water vapor content. And especially what we're st starting to see across the southeast is uh, lingering showers and storms with our latest cold front. Now, locally, there's really not too much going on when it comes to tropical uh, conditions. However, down to our south, as we look closer to South America and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Those slashes there you're seeing on your screen indicate a couple different tropical waves we will certainly be watching. The bigger concerns are actually going to be what looks to be the second and third one. Uh, that first one moving into uh, parts of the Caribbean right now does not pose much of a threat, but the second one behind it, that really large blue blob there, uh, and really close to the center of your screen is uh, the highest chance of formation of all the tropical systems at this time. In fact, it's potential potential tropical cyclone number two, uh, given that designated name by the National Hurricane Center yesterday so that they can start to put warnings on it. Currently, it has a wind speed of 23 miles per hour. Uh, in fact, it's actually moving to the west at 23 miles per hour. The wind speeds are on 40 to 50. Wind itself sustained at 40, gusting at 50 miles per hour. It is going to continue to move towards the west. This one will not pose a threat to the United States by any means, moving towards the greater and lesser Antilles Islands, as well as just north of South America. It will likely become our next name storm, which is Bonnie. Uh, that will be a tropical storm, if not later this afternoon, then it looks to be tomorrow that will likely see uh, tropical storm formation on this system. And there's potential as it continues to make its way into the Caribbean that it could become a Category 1 hurricane came before making initial landfall across Central America by this weekend. So just keeping a close eye on this one. Uh, again, no threat to the United States uh, from this system by any means. However, there's also another uh, tropical wave just to the east of it. Uh, this one is now given about a 20% chance of formation in five days. I know that looks rather low, and it is, but there is potential that it could change and form into something past that five-day mark. Right now, it's just a lower confidence forecast because ahead of it, there's already a more organized tropical wave uh, moving in to the same area. This second wave, however looks like it may curve a little bit more so towards the north or east, perhaps to the Caribbean islands by the end of the work week and into the weekend. Past that, uh, still a lot to be seen as to where it will go uh, by next week. There is potential it could uh, move into parts of southern Florida and then curve back out into the Atlantic. Again, that's just a guesstimate at this time because that is a long-term and a long-range forecast, and they're typically not too uh, high in confidence. So we will keep a close eye on the second wave, but right now we're keeping a close eye on it, and uh, it does not look to pose much of a threat to our area at this time. But should that change, of course, we'll let you know right here on uh, our digital platforms as well as News 13, our newscast from morning to evening and of course on the weekend as well. But you can really see just ahead of that red arrow line, uh, that larger blob on the, map, on the map, that's enhanced satellite. And it's actually showing where the highest and most intense convection is ongoing, where the storm system is trying to get its act together. That's the first tropical wave. That's potential tropical cyclone number two. The third one, the second one, Oh, now I'm getting my numbers all confused. The smaller one, the only one, the one that only has a 20% chance of formation, is just a little bit further to the east of that one. Now, there's also a third 
kind of tropical wave. It's actually going to be a trough that's kind of just a leftover trough um, coming from this latest frontal system across the southeast that's going to possibly stall over the Gulf of Mexico. We've already seen some weak convection across southern Louisiana and will likely be shifting towards the west across parts of Texas in the next two to five days as well. Also not very likely that we'll see a named system out of this as the chance of formation sits at just 30 percent but I will say it's already up from 20 percent over the just the past eight hours so maybe a little bit more confidence growing that there could possibly be something here it doesn't really pose much of a threat it's certainly not going to produce much in the way of strong winds it's very slow moving system if anything for parts of southern Louisiana and eastern Texas this will be a rainfall maker so seeing those three systems that I've just mentioned of course to the panhandle there's really not much to worry about at this time this is just an update to let you know that we are watching a few different systems across the Gulf as well as the Atlantic and of course we're going to keep a close eye on them and should anything change we'll be the first to let you know right here on our Tropic Topics special and of course our newscast and the Storm Track 13 app where you can also get all that information all your weather updates and tropical updates as well. Locally this week what we're going to be dealing with is more heat and humidity but better rain chances on the way with a stalled out boundary. Now we currently have been talking about a cold threat making its way across the southeast. Probably can't tell though because the temperatures on the map are not really indicative of cooler air. 80s, 70s, still all across the southeast. Now where you see a bit more of the cloud cover is where the boundary is kind of stalling out. It's actually working its way through Florida at this time and as it continues to remain across our air for the next several days, we're also going to have winds out of the south. So we're talking about strong winds coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, a lot of moisture hitting that boundary, not really having anywhere to go. It's just going to build up with pop up showers and storms becoming scattered to numerous just about every single day this week. So it's going to be your typical summertime pattern, just enhanced by a bit more tropical moisture and a stalled out boundary, which means rain chances will just be a little bit on the higher side. Scattered showers and storms just about every single day this week, which is what you'll see here on your seven day forecast. The good news I will say about the rainfall is it provides a little bit of relief from the intense heat. With more cloud cover and better rain chances around, temperatures for the coast will hover just shy of 90 degrees for the next several days and further inland will fall from the middle 90s to the low 90s. Now, if a shower storm does develop near you, you're probably going to see a temperature change that could fall into the 70s with a good downpour uh, and an outburst of some cooler air coming out of those thunderstorms. So again, that's the kind of relief that we are talking about. However, it'll still make it feel very humid. So factoring in humidity to the forecast and these numbers themselves, you can expect it to feel more like the middle to upper 90s. But again, not reaching that heat advisory criteria like we did all of last week. So again, just to wrap it up for you, scattered showers and storms are expected just about every single day this week. Locally, we are not going to be under any impacts from any tropical systems that we spoke about here on Tropic Topics at this time. The only one that could potentially have any type of impact on the United States is the leftover low in the Gulf of Mexico right now moving, trying to move into Louisiana and Texas, but more so our other tropical wave out in the Atlantic uh, that could be moving into the Caribbean by the weekend and where it goes after that could curve off to the Northeast and stay in the Atlantic and not impact anyone or there's potential that it could impact parts of the peninsula of Florida. Still a lot of details to iron out with that wave, but again, we'll be keeping a close eye on it and giving you all the updates as they come in right here on Tropic Topics. Thank you so much for joining us, and then we'll have another update a little bit later this week. And of course, more details to be shared on News 13 during your morning newscast, evening, and weekend as well. Thank you for watching Tropic Topics, sponsored by Peden Heating and Air Conditioning and Marietta Toyota. Be sure to download the StormTrack 13 app today to stay up to date with all of the latest weather information. For more local news, weather, sports, and more, visit MyPanhandle.com.